Uh, brother, brother Proctor, I'm going to need uh, some volume <clears throat> because I'm getting ready uh, to preach uh, the word of God. Uh, this man's servant uh, stands before you on this uh, Sunday morning just to do nothing but to uh, share the uh, word of God uh, with you all. Um, I want to just uh, say this really uh, quickly. I, I got this thing where when I wake up in the morning, I, I know there's nothing I've done so uh, fantastic. Uh, there's nothing that's been uh, so spectacular on my part that uh, caused me to get up out of my bed uh, this morning. And I want you to know uh, this morning that there's nothing that you've done uh, that was so spectacular. Uh, that brought you to this point uh, this morning, meaning I, I know you set your alarm clock, uh, some of you may have, uh, some of you may have that uh, alarm clock that's in your body where you just wake up at a certain time every single day, well that's me, 5 a.m. my eyes just open, and, and some of you uh, might think that you've done something really good out of the ordinary uh, to the reason why you are here. Uh, why your eyes open uh, while you are able to breathe the air that you are breathing today uh, that ability that you were given this morning to put one foot in front of the other and, and move your body uh, to this location has nothing to do with you and I it has all to do uh, with the almighty God I want you to know that there are some folks that did exactly what you did this morning. Uh, those who set their alarm clock uh, that did not make it. Uh, for some reason, that alarm clock went off, Brother Proctor. It, it sounded, it rang, it sang, it jingled, it tingled, whatever it did. But yet that person or those persons did not wake up. Uh, so I repeat it again, church, there's nothing that you and I have done so spectacular, uh, so overwhelming, uh, that we feel we should get the just due for being where we're at on this Sunday morning. Uh, I stand before you as a preacher of the gospel to let you know that you've not done, we've not done anything. It is all because of the almighty God. I just want to say that I'm so glad to, to be able to uh, come out and be able to worship his name and to praise his name, yeah. lift up his wonderful and his mighty and joyous name as the way we did uh, this morning. I know uh, that I got some trouble. I know that there are some trials. I know that there is strife in my life and if it's in mine, it's in yours too. Yeah. I know that I got a Jesus uh, who supplies me with my every need. He supplied me uh, with the breath of fresh air this morning. He, uh, he, he, he supplied me with my ability to be able to animate life as you see me move. I, I'm so glad that he allowed the spirit to dwell within my body yet another day. Uh, what's the purpose of all this, uh, uh, Brother Fisher? I believe the purpose of all this is for me to get something right in my life. I want you to know that this preacher is judgment day honest that there are some things that are not quite right with me. I want you to know there are some things that I have to get uh, together. Uh, there are some things that I have neglected in my life and I got to fix. And if all of us are judgment day honest, there are things in our lives that we've got to fix. There are things in our lives that we have neglected, not just day after day or month after month, but year after year we neglected things in our lives uh, that we need to get right things that we need to fix yeah. i believe that the almighty god has given me this opportunity to stand before you all and has given you all an opportunity as you sit before me to get something right that is wrong in our lives i believe that he has extended his patience and his long suffering uh, to us brother hoover because he wants us to repent of a sin he wants us to confess of a fault brother crutchfield i, I believe that he has extended our time upon uh, this earth to give us an opportunity to hold on to his unchanging hand because some of us have let go of his hand uh, some of us had let go 
of the unmovable. Isn't that all right, Brother Parker? I believe that he's given us this opportunity to be able to mend that broken relationship with someone who we love uh, dearly, some family member, some friend, some a co-worker, some neighbor. Uh, we've got this broken relationship, and he's given you and I the opportunity to mend that broken relationship. That's the reason why he's such a long-suffering God. That's the reason why he's such a patient God. That's the reason why he's such a loving God. That's the reason why he's such a gracious God. That's the reason why he's such a forgiving God. He's given us the opportunity, Brother Garrett, to get something right that is wrong in our life. He's given us another opportunity, Brother Boone, to be able to share the word of God to someone who is outside of the body of Christ. He's given us another opportunity to be able to tell someone about the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus the Christ. Yeah. He's given somebody an opportunity today to be able to tell his story just as you tell the story of Jesus the Christ. How he suffered on the cross, how he bled on that cross, how he was scourged and how he was beaten, how he was nailed to the cross in his hands and his feet, how a spear was pierced in his side, how he stood on that cross or he was on that cross and he, he said, Eli, Eli, lama sabbatani, that is the same, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? But he didn't come down from that cross. Why not? Because of you and me and I'm so glad I'm so glad that he's given me another opportunity today to be able to share the death burial and resurrection with somebody today this preacher stand before you today to let you know that I'm all about the book the chapter and uh, the verse so therefore I will not add to the word of God nor uh, will I take away uh, from the word of God on this day so if you're visiting with us uh, we want you to know that you are special guests. Uh, we want you to know the type of family we are. We are a loving family. And I hope that has been uh, seen in the little time that you've been here on uh, this morning. Listen, uh, God is good. And each of us ought to recognize the reason why we sit here today has nothing to do with us or has nothing to do with anyone else it all has to do with the almighty God. And he's given us an opportunity to work on us. See, I can't work on you. I, I got to work on me, bro Crutchfield. Isn't that all right? Uh, see, I got to work on me, bro Proctor. I got to work on me. I, I, can't, I can't work on you. That's your job to work on you, to fix you, to get you right. Amen. Only person I am responsible for. Uh, when I stand uh, before uh, the judgment seat of Christ is me naked right. exposed right. and as transparent as I can be right. me right. and no one else so um, we got a chance to get something right today Praise we got a chance for some folks to accept Christ Amen. the way he said yes they ought to accept him. It's so good to see all who are out on this uh, Sunday morning. Let's please do pray uh, for those who are not able to be with us. Uh, uh, we uh, know some are with us right now in cyberspace and uh, they are able to worship uh, with us and uh, sing with us and pray with us and uh, to be involved in uh, the teaching and, and the preaching. And we want to thank uh, all of those who work in the audio and the visual uh, ministry from the Hoovers to the Smocks and uh, all of the young men that prepared the CDs and uh, try to get the message of the Word of God out to those uh, who are lost. We uh, want to thank you for that. Please pray for uh, those who are ill. My sister Alita uh, Proctor, she is out. Sister Proctor is out. We know uh, that uh, Sister Banks is out. Sister Cooks is out. Uh, so please do pray for them. We know that the Ross are out of town. They are traveling. So please do uh, pray uh, for uh, their traveling uh, grace. Um, uh, let's just pray for us as a congregation as a whole as well. Let's pray uh, for each other. Uh, listen, uh, this morning, uh, let's turn to uh, 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter. 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter. We'll begin reading at verse number 1 and conclude at verse number uh, 10. Verse number 10. So the Bible 
reads, the Apostle Paul writes his second epistle or letter to uh, the church at Corinth. And he says these words. He says, for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands eternal in heaven. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with a house which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened. Not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that wrought us from, from the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given us unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that while if we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in this body according to what he has done, whether it be good or whether it be bad. Church, the tag for this morning lesson under the title series, Where Is Your Faith? is the eyes that see the invisible. The eyes that see the invisible. Church, I don't know if you've ever done this, but I have, and I've tried this on several occasions uh, as a young boy, and even as a man. I have shut my eyes and began to walk and I would challenge myself as a child to see how far I can walk with my eyes shut. Even in my adolescent years, Brother Crutchfield, and my teenage years, I have challenged myself in closing my eyes, taking a mental picture prior to closing my eyes and walking and challenging myself to see how far I can walk with my eyes closed. Brother Boone, even as a grown man, I have shut my eyes and began to walk to see if I had gained any other experience when I was an adolescent, a child, to see if now, because of my years of experience, my wisdom that has been acquired over the time of my life, that now I should be able to close my eyes and walk a greater distance than I had when I was a child. Church, unfortunately, I have never gone far with my eyes shut as I walk. There is this fear of that I am going to stumble. Uh, there is this fear that I am going to collide with something. Uh, there is this fear that I am going to fall in a ditch. I'm going to fall into a lake. Uh, there is this fear that I am going to 
fall and not be able to get back up. Church, I want you to know that when Paul uh, wrote this epistle to those who were in uh, the church in Corinth, he explained to them that it is important that they understand that they must walk by faith and not by sight. I know some of you are saying, preacher, I've tried that. How is it that the apostle Paul wants us to not walk by sight, but to walk by faith, something that is unseen? Uh, we know uh, that faith is uh, that which the Hebrew writer recorded in Hebrews 11th chapter, verse number one, when he says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Uh, church, I want you to know that it's hard to walk uh, by faith. I, I want you to know that it's hard to close your eyes and rely on something that cannot be seen. I want you to know that if we were in the court of law, Brother Garrett, and there was a prosecuting attorney and there was a defense attorney, uh, the, uh, uh, the prosecuting attorneys will bring the evidence they would bring those who are eyewitnesses, those who saw what had happened uh, before uh, the court and the jury to be able to execute judgment on uh, the uh, defendant. But I want you to know that in this court of law, in the spiritual realm, the evidence that we have is evidence that is not seen. Brother Fish or Brother Crutchfield, if you will, uh, get for me a second Corinthians, the fifth chapter, verse number one. And I want you to read our text starting at verse uh, number one. And I want you to see what the Apostle Paul uh, said. Read. Second Corinthians chapter five. Verse number one. He says what? For we know that. He said, for we know. Stop right there. He says, for we know. Uh, church, I want you to know that this, this, this word that the Apostle Paul uh, uses this word no comes from the Greek word which is ado ado and this word ado means that it is something that you and I have received it's something that you and I perceive it's something that you and I see something that you and I have knowledge of of this word ado the word to know means that you and I have paid attention uh, we have paid attention. It means that you and I have knowledge. Now, I want you to know something here. Uh, when Paul uses this, uh, Brother Crutchfield, when he says, we know, he's talking about those who are in the body of Christ, those that have heard the word, believed and repented of their sins, confessed the sweetest name that ever rolled off mortal tongue, and were baptized into the body of Christ. No. He says, for we know we have knowledge of. You and I have knowledge of. We perceive something with our eyes. We see something. So we know. So, so, so Brother Crutchfield, read uh, what he says. He says, uh, for we know. That if our earthly house. That if our earthly house. Of this tabernacle. Of this tabernacle. Were dissolved. Were dissolved. We have a building of God. We have a building of God. And house not made with a hands. A house not made with hands. Eternal in heaven. It's eternal in heaven. Listen to this church. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle. I want you to know that this word Tabernacle comes from the Greek word which is skenos, skenos, and it means that which is temporary. It's a temporary tent. It's a temporary hut. It's a temporary booth. It's a temporary abode met. It, 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 but, but Gary, it's a, a place that houses something on a temporary basis. I, I want you to know, uh, Brother Smart said, as you look at me and as I look at you, I see this 
physical abode that you and I have, this abode that houses our spirit and our souls. And I want you to know it's temporary. It's temporary. Uh, if everybody get in this. That what we see right now is temporary. It's a tabernacle. Uh, 